Dad introduced himself again to Ford, who was directing, and he said, you know, you may not remember this, but uh, I was on the, I can't, I don't remember the name of the ranch at Hackberry when you were shooting such and such. And he went, and Ford went, oh yeah. So when Ford got ready to do stagecoats, he said, well, let's, let's get that fat cowboy from, from Universal, uh, you know, for, he, he can drive a six up. And that was how Dad really got the job. Wow. He remembered. Huh? John yeah. Remembered well, well, you know, if, if, yeah, Ford, Ford was interested. Cause I, when I got out of the Navy, I went, Dad said, what are you going to do? And I was going to go to Europe. And he said, well, I've got a Ford with, I have a picture that, with John Ford. And he said, I can get you on the picture. We'll go to Texas because we're going to be on location for about two months. And you can be my roommate. I went, perfect. So I went down and got a chance to meet the whole John Ford, John Wayne stock company. I mean, they were, you know, the, in every John Ford movie or that you see the same, same guy, same crew, and it became, it became kind of, that was the deal. And Ford drove producers nuts because he'd always shoot in the fall, which he would get interesting shots, but you ran the risk of having rain. And we were in Texas, and we were there for two weeks, didn't have one foot of film in the can, because it was raining, and got people were coming in. Said, "What's going on?" And he said, "Hey, look!" And well, should we move it? And he said, "No, we'll let's just go ahead and re keep working on the ending, and we'll shoot." And when it kind of broke a little, they go out six, shoot second unit stuff, and then come back in, and then, and then they shot the movie. It was kind of two road together, and uh, oh, that's a good one. And so anyway, it was, and I mean, it was, it was, it was hilarious. But old man Ford was something else. So you hear all these stories about Ford. I was there and actually watched how he kind of worked and it was it was something wow. and he didn't give the editors anything to work with he knew exactly what he wanted it to look with uh, look like and he'd shoot a master that's and that's it you know and yeah, if they got it in one take beautiful. that was that was it and then he would go out and when the weather really looked bad he'd get, send the crew that well let's go out and we'll shoot this which in searchers they were in the snow and all the rest of it. you know and that is that's his meat but the reason he would do it is because then all of his family, and he referred to the Stockholm, his family, would have money for Christmas because everybody was working in the fall. Yeah, so anyway. That's a great idea. So anyway, that's... His cinematographer, or Orson Welles, used him for... Oh, uh, the second was, I don't know, was that Wingate Smith? No, uh, it was, uh, I can't think of his name right now. Or no, uh, Smith was... Uh, da, 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 da. And, uh, and then his brother was the second, I'm trying to think of who the, John something or other. I need to look that up. I can't remember all that. Anyway, where, what, how do you want this thing to work? We'll just talk. Are you going to answer, ask questions? Yeah, I'll just ask you some questions and we'll just talk and then we'll just pull some little pieces out of it. Okay. Okay, just so the editor knows who you are, can you tell us your full name and where you're born? Uh, Timothy A. Devine, and I'm known as Tad, which are the initials. And I was born in Hollywood, California, uh, November 26, 1934. So just to sort of set the stage, okay, tell us about your family, like your grandparents. What, what were the kind of business were they in? Uh, my mother's side of the family, uh, Jack House, was actually a stock contractor. He came to Hollywood in 1919 with 40 head of horses and five kids and to rent horses to the movies. And uh, their first barn was down at Gower and Sunset, which is later became known as Gower Gulch, and then they moved on out uh, into the valley on, off of Riverside Drive, and uh, they used to drive the horses up the old L.A. River, which is a sand bottom, to Universal and Warner Brothers and Republic, which are all kind of on, on the river. And uh, that's and my mom then met my father uh, uh, actually working on a picture. On, on my dad's side, uh, my dad was an actor in the 30s, 40s, 50s, Andy Devine, and dad was uh, born in Flagstaff, Arizona, but raised in Kingman, and uh, my grandfather, De grandfather Devine was a hotel, uh, hotel man. He owned the Beale Hotel in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Kingman, Arizona. He would ri originally come out and worked in the lumber mills uh, in Flagstaff, and uh, he was injured in a train accident when they were bringing the loggers in 
and with the insurance money was able to go ahead and buy the, the hotel in 1906. And uh, so and the hotel still stands there. But anyway, that's, and that's where, uh, that's where the parents. Now, as divine, is it Irish? Or? Yeah, it's Irish. Uh, they came from, uh, uh, grandmother divine came from County Clare, and grandfather divine uh, came from Tipperary. And uh, they kind of migrated to Kansas City, and then my grandfather then came from Kansas City to Arizona. Now, your dad was a movie star in Hollywood in the early days. Yeah. He was under contract from at Universal Jiminy from 19, well, he worked extra from 1926 up to about 1930, 31 or 30, I think it was like 31 or 32 that he was under contract to uh, Universal and stayed there for 20 some odd years uh, until Universal changed hands and the, the Brits bought it out. And uh, then he went to Republic and did nine pictures with uh, Roy Rogers. And uh, then he was approached by some people who were going to start doing made for Western or made for television Westerns. And they then launched the Wild Bill Hickok series that ran from 1951, I think it was, through 56, 57. And dad played the, the part of Jingles on that. And uh, then he had a, a sort of a kids television show called Andy's Gang, which was famous for Froggy the Gremlin and Plunk Your Magic Twanger and they, at, at that deal. And uh, the, uh, uh, then Dad uh, did, uh, went out on the road and so did things in reverse. When we were growing up, he had a nine to five job. He went to Universal every day and came back and so forth. And after my brother and I got up and got to college, uh, Dad and Mom, he started doing the stage stuff. Uh, you know, playing Captain Andy and it, Never Too Late, My Three Angels, and they were on a regular kind of circuit and he and Mom would drive in the van around the country and Dad was a ham radio operator and so he had his, had his, his mobile rig and he would just look up guys that he knew from all over the United States. So they'd go for, a, uh, go for a, 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 co a coffee along the way and it was... Uh, he was WB6RER, the red-eyed rooster. And uh, anyway, that was one of his great deals. And that's, uh, and he went on and actually passed away really pretty early. He was only 71. And uh, it was a, got a, uh, got a uh, blood poisoning. And actually that was, uh, things stopped the heart. And uh, so uh, anyway, but he and I were close. We spent a lot of time hunting, fishing together and, uh, you know, they live relatively close by, and so it was, it was, it was great. How did your parents meet? Well, my dad was uh, now under contract at Universal, and John Ford was directing a picture called Dr. Bull with uh, Will Rogers. And they were getting ready to go to the Indian Rodeo in Flagstaff, and they start talking Western cowboy stuff. And he, uh, Will Rogers said, you know, the best horsemen he knew were the house boys from Uliga, Oklahoma, where he had grown up. And he said, matter of fact, I think Jack House is out here in Southern California. Well, my grandfather, as I said, it came with 40 head of horses and was running to the movies. My mother happened to be working as an extra on the set. And she said, excuse me, Mr. Rogers, I heard you talking about Jack House, and that's my father. And he said, well, you must be one of the twins. And she said, yes, I'm Dorothy. And uh, he said, well, Dorothy, and he introduced her around the group, and they broke for lunch. And my dad had lunch with my mom, and at the end of lunch, he says, you know, because mother was into horses and riding and all that. And uh, he said, I may just marry you. And later on that day, he went to the assistant director, and he says, uh, why don't we keep that Dorothy house gal on the picture? And they got married at the end of the summer. And he was a dirty old man. He was 28. Mother was just 18. And, uh, and a looker. She was, and uh, so that was kind of how they met. And we lived in, uh, in the valley, San Fernando Valley. And I was, you know, raised, in, uh, uh, raised in, 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 in Van Nuys and went all the way through school there. What was your father's full name? His real name was Andrew Weber Devine. 
and uh, Weber was the name of the Catholic priest in, Fla in Flagstaff that married his mom and dad and baptized him. And uh, you'll see in some books they keep talking about Andy Devine's real name is Jeremiah Schwartz. Well, the story behind that is that dad had, through a series of things, ended up at St. Benedict's a, a Jesuit school in, Cof or in, in uh, Leavenworth, Kansas, where his aunt lived. And he lived with the aunt and was going to school, recruited by, by uh, uh, Santa Clara to play football. So he went from St. Benedict's to Santa Clara. Grandfather Divine got sick, so dad moved back to Arizona to be close to home. And uh, that was, uh, you know, and, and later on he, he came to Hollywood. Always thinking he was going to go back to school while he was working extra and so forth. He played a season with the LA Bulldogs, which was a semi-professional team. And he couldn't really play professional football and go back to school. So he played under the name of Jeremiah Schwartz, because they wouldn't trace that back to a Jesuit school. And Dick Arlen, uh, who was an actor in the 30s, and dad at, with Arlen at Universal did a series of adventure kind of movies called the Arlen Divine Series, uh, two and three reelers. And some reporter uh, heard Arlen say, hey, Buckets, uh, or, or Jeremiah, when referring to, to Andy, and uh, the guy said, why, why did you call him Jeremiah? And he said, well, that's Andy's real name, Jeremiah Schwartz, kind of as a, as a, as sort of a gag. And the guy printed it up, and now you'll find it. And there's one or two uh, trivia on Hollywood, and they will list Andy Devine's real name is Jeremiah Schwartz. Wrong. It was just the one of those things that pick up and took on a life of its own. What position did he play in football? He was uh, played center, and center, and then a, and a linebacker. And in those days, you kind of went both ways, and that's you know. What he, you know, what he did, he, and he was, he was a big kid, you know, when we at uh, listed in the La Cresta, which is the uh, annual at Northern Arizona State, which is now Arizona State uh, in the north, you know, uh, but at that time it was it was Northern Arizona State Teachers College. Anyway, he's listed as six two, two hundred and twenty pounds, playing. And that's, and he played basketball also, believe it or not. So, uh, anyway. he, he had an interesting voice. Yeah, uh, he, they, uh, uh, it, he had kind of nodes on the vocal cords, which he would always say, well, Crosby's got nodes on the vocal cords, but his or things are in tune. And dad did swallow a, a, swallow a curtain rod when he was a little kid, <clears throat> and it injured his throat. But he said, really, I don't know whether that had anything to do with the voice or not. It was just, it was squeaky. And Dad was in Hollywood right at the transition to sound. And, you know, there were guys, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Rem Ramon Navarro and those who were great matinee idols, but their voice did not record at all. And they, uh, everybody was afraid of the sound. And he said, Andy... With your voice and sound coming in, you are your toast. It's over with. You'll never get another job. Well, it became kind of the trademark, and uh, he could force it up, and it would get squeaky and and so forth. But uh, that was uh, that was his kind of entree into 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 Hollywood and the, and the business there. And uh, so you were a kid. There's a lot of you saw a lot of the Hollywood culture at that time. When I think back on it. Uh, yeah, I did. But then again, it seemed like there were two Hollywoods in those days. There were the big time uh, studios, you know, like uh, MGM, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, and so forth. They were on the west side, or they were over the hill in LA, and you came on the other side of the hill in, into the valley, and everybody there seemed to have a western or the that was a western bent on everything that was there. Uh, they were all, all ranchettes, and we lived on five-acre model farm. I was in 4-H, and I raised a yearling calf and hogs and rabbits, and uh, the you know there were open fields around us. We'd ride horses, 
and uh, the walnut orchards and orange orchards and so forth. And those that had a, an affinity really to the equestrian stuff, they would all live in the valley in these, and they were scattered all over the place. Uh, but the valley didn't really start to you know, become a carpet of houses until after the Second World War. But early on, it was, uh, you know, that's, that was, it was, it was fabulous. But that, and people would drop by, 